Done. Hello, people of the world. Hi. Today I'm working on Sir Codsworth, my 2002 Ford Focus SVT rally car project. Big stuff happening today, big stuff. These are for another vehicle. And these I'll save for another day. And the big giant black banana is gonna go in the back of the truck. Right, Butters? You agree? Ugh, this thing's heavy. Are you swimming on the concrete? Okay, you keep swimming. Gotta make sure I'm safe. Use a bungee cord. Don't want this stuff ending up on someone else's bumper. I think that would make it bumper inception, right? By the way, that's what's in the back of the truck. Bumpers, yay! I'm gonna get a sandwich real quick and we'll go to work. You're gonna notice my videos here on the Focus are gonna have a little bit of a different feel to them. That thing's so soft because I'm not working in my garage. I'm out here with the car. Let's see if I can tuck this up here so the front of the car stays covered. Time to peel the giant car banana. Dude, that's so crazy. It is an exact match to the paint that's on the car right now. Too bad the paint that's on the car right now is getting sanded off because it's all sun faded, but this thing's in good shape, I can tell already. And what the hell is this? Of course, there's a penguin <laughs> inside the bumper. This is really cute. It is a little bit spicy outside right now. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of difficult to do work out here. Ever since I first got this Focus, I've been wanting to put the correct bumper on this thing. And by correct, I mean the European spec rear bumper off the Focus ST170. Biggest difference with this bumper and the US spec one is the US spec one is absolutely hideous. It sticks out like half a foot. But allow me to demonstrate real quick. I'll show you what I mean. I know fully that this is a rally car that will get driven down dirt roads and get way dirtier than that, but I am washing this before that bumper goes on. It also came with the rear fog light and reverse light that go into the bumper. And in Europe, the reason why they have rear fog lights is if you're driving on the motorways or the Autobahn over in Germany, you turn on the rear fog light and it alerts vehicles coming from behind. They're traveling at a much higher rate of speed know that you were there so they don't rear end you. I'm gonna trim this. If you look at the back side of the bumper right here where the rear fog light and reverse lights go, that is actually coming in contact with the bumper beam that goes behind it. If this is just a normal street car, I would absolutely not condone cutting up the rear bumper beam because that protects you in a collision. But this thing has a roll cage and it's a rally car that's going to be colliding with cacti. So, time to cut it out. Even after all that grinding I just did, still doesn't clear. You can see right here on the other side where a tow hook would be on a European spec focus, uh, the bumper beam is right here touching the bumper. I could probably ditch that bumper beam entirely, but I'm sure it does provide some kind of structural rigidity back here and tightening up the back of the car. It's a, I don't know, race car. That clean spot right here on the beam is actually where it's rubbing, so probably just have to trim like that off.
Oh, so much for that blade. It exploded and a chunk of it hit me in the face. And I know someone's gonna say something about me using the wrong tools to do this or something, but I'm not at my house and I don't know where anything is at over here. My plan for all this is as soon as Charlie is done fabricating the roll cage for me, I'm bringing the car back to my house and I'll continue working on it over there. But for now, it just because he's doing fabricating and this is where his fabric cobbler stuff is at. I'm gonna definitely owe him some wheels because I am on the third one already on this back bumper. Ha! New plan of attack. I didn't think the European Focus was gonna be that much different than the US spec Focus, but these five mile per hour bumpers are no joke. They definitely protrude a ton. So I'll just take it off. What is that? What the hell is that? What are you? It was like some kind of rainbow dung beetle or something and it was drunk. Is drunk. That one right there looks like it comes in from the other side and uh, it's kind of dark. I don't want to kill the battery on this truck either, but it's my only light source. Talk about a weight savings. This thing's probably good 15 pounds or so. I'm probably gonna have to replace it with something. Some kind of like maybe a little bash bar or something to go back there. Success, finally. I feel bad, it's like nine o'clock at night. I should like hurry up and go. I don't wanna be rude. Yay! Done. I got it on there. Daytime. Daytime. Afternoon time. Whatever. Check that out. Ooh, looks so much better. It just has a better overall shape to the car with that bumper on there. It's like, look down there. Nice and sleek. Man, it is a scorcher today. And I got a different truck. Goodbye, Ranger. I will miss you. Hello Titan. It's five o'clock in the afternoon the next day. I decided to start working a little bit later because it was 111 today outside. Or at least that's what the thing at my house said. 111. Thankfully it's cooled down considerably and it's only 105 out now. It's getting a little chilly. I really thought this one through trying to do this while holding a camera. I always stuck to my hair. That right there, aside from being one of the worst quality fitting bumpers I have ever seen in my entire life, is a Mark I Focus RS replica bumper. Before I continue any further on this, I just wanna let you know, I fully understood that buying a bumper at this low of a cost is going to come at a massive sacrifice for quality. That's why real body kits cost well over a thousand dollars. The whole reason why I took the SVT bumper off the front of the car is because they do not make them anymore and this is not that common of a car and I didn't want to destroy that bumper off-road. This one though is fair game. I mean seriously look at the body line going across the top of this bumper. This thing looks like it was made out of a block of soap. That right there is just laughably terrible. Like what is what is this? What is, the body line just disappears randomly. It looks like someone just took a, a knife and carved where they think a line should be. Update on the seat. Last night, Charlie worked on the mounts for the racing seat. So he did some initial measurements and now I need to sit in the thing and he's gonna take some measurements before he welds these things in place. A? A. I feel this is a good height. Okay. So I don't know how these guys go up two notches on that. Okay, so you got plenty of height adjustment still? Yeah, there's a ton. I would go one up in the front and two up in the back. Two up in the rear? Yeah. Ooh, the sunset's pretty. Okay. Oh, cool. So that's where you're gonna make? Yeah, because this, this side here is lower than that side over there. 
so I had to make these rails, because it's also narrower than stock, so I had to make those to level it out and get it to the width of those brackets. Oh, good. This is, dude, this is dead on. Yeah, the rear going up, absolutely perfect, putting the rear up like that. Sweet. The camera is dead even with my eyes right now, so this is pretty much the view I'm going to have at this current height. I think that's good. And then as far as my hands go, I can stick my hands well past the steering wheel. It's about right where my wrist is at. My hot dogs aren't touching the bottom of the steering wheel, so that works. Mm -hmm. Slide it back some and see how that feels. Like, slide it back there. Yeah, that's way better on your knees. My arms, I mean, once I have a hub adapter on here, it'll be great placement for my hands. And it brings the seat closer to the main hoop of the roll cage too for the back bar, so. And then head clearance wise, I mean, even with a helmet, I don't even think I'd hit my head on this. Well, it'll be close, but I can't really go over enough. So yeah. Back on the subject of the front bumper, I have to get this thing on there as best as possible because I need to take some more measurements so that way I can start my own personal welding project. Ooh, it's like growing cocaine underneath it. Done. <laughs> this right here is going to be my project to learn how to weld on. So what I'm gonna be doing is beefing up the radiator core support so the skid plate will mount to it and then also I'm doing something special with the front bumper. Be Jeez, that doesn't even remotely fit. I'm gonna have so much work to do to get this to fit. Yeah, because look, if you, if you pull this in, look how bad it's pulling that up. Like you're gonna have to make relief cuts and re-fiberglass it or something. So go ahead and line up your end with the wheel well. All right. Oh, it's making cracky noises. The bottom sticks out really hard. I'm not even close and it's like crunching and crinkling. We'll get it close. Oh. Okay, and it's overlapping by like a good three quarters of an inch. There's a big enough hole I can stick all four of my fingers in under the headlight over here. Uh, there is no hole on this side. The whole thought behind buying this bumper was I didn't want to destroy a good bumper on the front of this car. And I was like, oh, it'll probably just be a little off, a little bit of body work and it'll make it work. I, this couldn't even come close to remotely fitting. I'd have to cut the bumper, massive sections of bumper out and try to blend it together. I don't even think I could rework that. I thought it was gonna be a minimal effort. I don't think it. it's worth reworking. Fuck. I don't wanna put the SVT bumper on there because I don't wanna ruin a bumper that they don't even make anymore and it's kind of desirable for someone trying to restore SVT Focus because they didn't make many of those cars. So I guess I could stick a regular Focus ZX3 bumper on it. Man, I perfect with the back bumper, which I wasn't worried about the back bumper because it's the front of the car that I think is going to get beat up. The back of the car I wasn't too worried about. So that's why I put the OEM Ford bumper back there. But Grab him. What is he? A Palo Verde beetle. Oh. They don't spray? They don't stink, but they got big mandibles. You probably don't want to get bit. Oh, is he gonna try to bite you? I don't know. They don't even eat anything. They don't have a digestive tract. And I'm back. So that means I'm gonna be working on one of you two in the next video. I gotta come up with a game plan for that front bumper. You know I'm not gonna half-ass things. And uh, this video was a little bit more talking than working, which is not like me. You guys know I like to work my ass off in these videos. So don't worry, I will make up for it with the next video, which is gonna be on one of these two guys and give Charlie some more time with fabricating. And then there'll be some more focused content by about a week. So anyway, thank you guys for watching and uh, I'll figure out this bumper situation. Maybe we'll get some more parts from the UK or something. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon for another video. Bye.